Here we are again, game lovers, with another game to review. If you have not done so already, make sure to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with new videos the moment they upload. This is much appreciated. Now that you've done that, let's talk about Geek Out. Geek Out is a playroom entertainment game for two to infinite players from ages 10 to adult. What is with all of these games not allowing you to play once you're an adult? And what does that mean, infinite? You can play this game with everyone in the world at the same time? <laughs> Crazy. It takes about 30 minutes to play Geek Out. So let's geek out. Playing this game is extremely simple. Basically speaking, this is a trivia game with a slight twist. The twist shows how geeky you really are. First, each card has five different categories to play. They are color-coded and match the die that comes with the game. On the die, you have red, blue, yellow, green, black, and white. Red is the game's category, which could mean board games, card games, video games, or other games. Blue is for comic questions, and that ranges from magna to movies to comic script. Yellow is for sci-fi, green is for fantasy, these two categories should be defined a little since the differences in genre aren't similar to everyone. Science fiction includes futuristic themes in technology. So Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, for example. Fantasy is fictional history with magical elements or fictional characters. So Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, King Arthur. But I digress. Black is a miscellaneous category, which could ask anything from music to writers for television. It's a fun category, though. And white is where you choose your own category. You can pick any of the categories from the list, and good luck to you. In gameplay, you can play one-on-one -on -one or in teams. That's especially good if you have a larger group. You select one person or team to go first. They roll the die, and the player to the right draws and reads their category. Then the roller chooses to accept the minimum bid or raise it to a higher total. Then the next player has the option to make an even higher bid. This continues clockwise until all but one player passes the bid. The highest bidder then attempts to complete the challenge. So if it's two, they might be giant songs. I'd say I could name four. Someone else would say they can name seven. I'd say I could do nine. Everyone passes. If I could spout off nine, they might be giant songs. Birdhouse in Your Soul, Older, Istanbul, Not Constantinople, Dr. Evil, Another First Kiss, Why Does the Sun Shine, Cyclops Rock, Particle Man, and New York City. Then I gain the card, and I'm a geek. Each card is worth one point. If I can't say nine, I'd pick up a negative two point token, dropping my score. If no one bids higher than the minimum, there is no penalty for failing the challenge. To win, you simply need five points. If you want to challenge someone's answer, debate it out and go from there. Finally, no serials are allowed in a valid list. For example, if the category is time travel movies and you say Back to the Future, you cannot add Back to the Future Part 2, Part 3, or if they ever make one, Part 4. It's the same thing, so it doesn't count. So let's talk pros and cons. Pros. It's easy to play. This is a real quick gameplay that you can play almost anywhere, and the questions are enjoyable. The glossary. The rulebook comes with a mini glossary. In case someone isn't sure what tabletop games or franchises are, it's pretty handy for the non-geek and everyone. And it's fun! You can outbid your friends and seriously geek out at some pretty silly knowledge and find out who is the top geeky friend of all. Cons! The die. The colors are being removed from this die so that in a few months I may have to repaint them or pencil them in or just count everything as white. Plus, the die is so light and odd to use I feel like I'm throwing around pellets or something. Difficulty. 
Some questions are really difficult, and you'll need to have extensive knowledge of anime, magna, sci-fi channel, and comic lore to answer all of them. If you're a true geek, that's no problem. But if not, the game is not nearly as fun. The minus two pieces. The minus two pieces are punched out from a big grid when you get it, and they're pretty durable, but they are so easy to lose, especially if a vacuum cleaner comes by during the game. Stop it, Mom, go. With pros and cons looked at, where does Geek Out rank? <laughs> Perfect. Geek Out is a wild card game. It just barely made it, though. Nearly a comfy cruise, but just squeaks by due to the aspects of bidding. And the fact that you can mislead others by your bidding, and you can mix and match other versions of the Geek Out style. They have a pop culture one. Oh yeah, it's time to geek out. Johnny Five Alive! Live well and prosper. Hey guys, thanks for watching this game review of Geek Out. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe for easy updates of the Talking to the Mic show. For another cool card game where the trivia is global, check out Sneaky Cards. For the last game review on Batman Flux, check that video out there. Our next game review is on Toss Up. We'll see you next time on the Talking to the Mic show. If you'll excuse me, I have a duty to uphold. Up, up, and away.